Sailors out of uniform don't shoot, you miss cushion. But it's nice to see you out of air. Sarah? Sarah? Oh! <laughs> you must be the other Miss Cushing. Isn't this nappy day then, eh? For all three of you? Yes, yes, it is. Of course it is. Body snatchers strike in North London. Are we dealing with a modern version of Burke and Hare? Well, sadly, the anatomy schools don't need the help of body snatchers at this time of year. They're well stocked with corpses from the poorhouses. What do you think there? Well, I don't know. Some outlandish cult, perhaps? Have you been consulted on the subject, Holmes? Come in, Hawkins! Ah, Hawkins. Make yourself at home. Have a cup of coffee. Thank you. Uh, have you brought those descriptions? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. <clears throat> Body is so far exhumed. Uh, Albert Cotter, 48, fish porter of Shadwell, heart disease. Martin Rubri, 54, cirrhosis of the liver. And we don't know much about him, except it was thought he was an amateur pugilist of some sort in his youth. Uh, Jimmy King, 39, Covent Garden porter. Cerebral hemorrhage. You will continue your researches? If you say so, Mr. Holmes. If I do say so. And keep your eye on the premises of a certain Murdoch gull. Yes? Murdoch, do you think? He's the fence for anything out of the ordinary. He could be a man. One more thing, Mr. Holmes. Uh, the men and I would be very honoured if you'd drop by Christmas Eve. We try to get a bit festive at Christmas, and we like to invite a few guests. Christmas. Mary? 
Mary? There. It's a start. Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes? How am I supposed to think up yet another present for Watson? I mean, every year you inflict this agony on me. Well, it's quite simple, Mr. Holmes. You go to Gamages. Gamages? Yes, it's in Hoban, a departmental store. The People's Emporium. You'll be quite spoiled for ideas. Gamages. Mrs. Hudson! How dare you take my aspidestra? I do dare. Miss Cushing, season's greetings, eh? Good afternoon, Wilkinson. It looks like we're in for a bit more snow before long. I do hope not. this, Monsieur Jacoté? Uh, Madame Suzanne... Our arrangement is that you may sit by the parlour fire after dinner. Otherwise, I'd be obliged, when you were in the house, if you would keep to your room. Your sister Sarah gave me permission, Madame. This is my house, not my sister's. Even if she said it, which I doubt. You doubt my word? I'd be most surprised if my sister gave the run of the kitchen to my lodger. You'd be surprised what your sister gives. Very surprised. I think I'd be obliged if you left the kitchen now, monsieur. I don't think you hear what I'm saying. Susan! <gasps> Marcel! Oh, Susan! It has worked! They have made me warden at the mission! Now you ask her what she gave me. Did you give Monsieur Jacoté permission to help himself in here, in the kitchen? <laughs> I believe I did once. I didn't realize Ask it. her. What do you mean? What's going on? Ask her. You English are such hypocrites. Now you tell her what you gave me. What? What is all this about? Will someone please tell me what's going I see. Very well. You are warden now. Go and live there, then. You will have quarters at the mission. Go there. I don't want you under my roof. Go. I won't have you here. I won't. And as for you, monsieur, you will leave my house immediately. Immediately. Or I will call the police. Your belongings will be packed and left at the tradesman's entrance for your collection. How dare you! You sound exactly like Mother. What if I do? I thought I'd heard the last of that sort of thing when she died. How dare you talk about Mother like that? It's just as well I am like her. I don't know what would happen to this family otherwise. Oh! You hold us all together, do you? How splendid you are. Do you realize that Mary has gone away without telling anyone? Good. She's showing some spirit at last. You call that good? Sometimes I think you're not just feckless. I think you're deliberately irresponsible. Mary is a married woman. Well, no thanks to you. You stood in her way to the last. 
Jim Browner was never good enough for our family, was he? The daughters of Major Cushing, R.E. Never mind, he was a gambling wastrel. Our father was so... Be quiet. If anyone has disgraced this family, it's me. I warn you. One day, this diet of respectability is going to make you ill. Dear Mrs. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, yes. oh, the doctor has someone with him, a Miss Susan Cushing. Oh, then, well, you better have one, please. This is. What's that? Um, uh, that is a, a Christmas tree. It's a Norway spruce. Uh, oh, th this is Miss Cushing. Uh, Miss Cushing is concerned about her sister, Mrs. Browner. Very good. Uh, Miss Cushing's younger sister lives not far from her, just east of Camberwell. Um, Mrs. Browner visits her every Friday for tea, unless she sends excuses, which is most unusual. Um, last Friday, the, the 19th, Mrs. Browner failed to send excuses or to arrive, so Miss Cushing has made inquiries at her lodgings, but Mrs. Browner has not been seen there since the last Thursday. Sounds to me as though she's disappeared. Evidently, Holmes. There could be one or two reasons for her disappearance. Yes, I know. Either because she wished to disappear or because somebody else wished her to disappear. Oh, do you know any reason why anyone else should wish her to disappear? Mary? None. She's the most lovable of creatures. Everyone loves her. As to her whereabouts, I mean, I suggest that you try the Missing People's Agency. I could find you a list of addresses. There. Ah. Oh. Charming, isn't it? Slight improvement on that rather sad Piceard Excel, sir. Sarah. What possessed you? You've wrecked it all. The waiting possessed me. You drive me mad, Sarah. Sometimes I, th I think I'm possessed. Where are you now? Oh, some filthy hall near the hospital. Thanks to your sister. I will not let her forget this. I need a reference if you're going to find a decent place to stay. Are you going to Belgium still for Christmas? Yes, my uncle, Miora Stand. Well, when you come back, I'll write a reference for you. I'm warden of this place. It'll count. I love you. Come to me after Christmas. Miss Cushing. Shall I put the parcels under the tree? Yes, please. Nothing from Mrs. Browner yet? Nothing as yet, no. Did Suglins include the Madeira in their delivery today? Yes, Miss Cushing. Everything's ready for this evening. and the very same to you.
Miss Cushing. I, I say, Miss Cushing. Oh. Uh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Bradbrook. Uh, I dare say your sister Sarah will be joining us. I'm afraid not, Mr. Bradbrook. She's warden of the Mission Hostel now. Her duties to her residence will keep her there. I shall see her only on Sundays now, I fear. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Bradbrook. Oh, no, 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 you haven't, not at all. No. <laughs> well, come now, Mr. Bradbrook. It's Christmas Eve. To make up, we shall open our presents from under the tree straight after supper instead of at midnight. Oh, what do you say? Very well, yes, yes, fine, splendid. <laughs> let, 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 let's, let's do that. Well, Gladstone will be pleased at least. There's a treat somewhere for him. Welcome, gentlemen. Very good of you to come. Gal, has he been arrested? Uh, no, Mr. Holmes. He's come to complain. Has he been? Yeah, he spotted our surveillance of him. He doesn't like it. You won't go up? Oh, dear me, no. Oh. Join the party. <laughs> To try it. What's so good about it? It, it stretches forward over the, the handlebars if you if you need it. <laughs> Where else did you find it? Gamages <laughs> People's Emporium. Uh, thank you. Hi, magnificent. Parkins, oh, so do come in, dear fellow. Please sit down. What is the news of the grave robberies? The Camberwell force have been on to me. An incident down there. They were wondering if it had any connection. I don't think it does myself, but I value your opinion, Mr. Holmes. We need to get this nasty little joke solved and out of the way. Joke? Respectable lady, in company, opening her parcels Christmas Eve. One of them's a bit odd. It's full of salt. She empties out the salt. What's in it? Two freshly severed human ears. We think it was a medical student. She had a medical student as a lodger. Post-mortem anatomy can make certain individuals thoroughly callous. Well, she threw him out just before Christmas. Bit of a row, apparently. Anyway, knowing your methods, Mr. Holmes, I've had the ears left quite untouched at the lady's house, which is... Yes, here it is, Trafalgar Villa, Camberwell, and Miss Susan Cushing. Oh, Mr. Holmes, have you come to help me find Mary after all? I'm afraid not, Miss Cushing. The inspector has asked me here to look into that other unfortunate business. Oh, that. Well, I won't have those things in the house, Mr. Hawkins. If you wish to see them, you must go to the conservatory. Have you arrested that wretched young man yet? Just a matter of time, Miss Cushing. Postmark Harris. Yeah. Now, now, this student fellow, Jackete, was going home for Christmas to Ostend via Harridge. Yes, I agree with you. Courage is persuasive. The writing is poor, uneducated. I know the medical profession is notorious for this illegibility, but this. Read with a broad nib pan, very inferior ink. Tar twine, Stockholm tar, knots intact. Rustled and embedded in it these very singular enclosures. 
What do you think of it, Watson? Well, a ring has been torn from this ear. They're not a pair. I suppose it would be rather easier for Jackete to have abstracted ears from a dissecting room which were not actually a pair. To what purpose? I know, some kind of disgusting practical joke. Gentlemen, this is no practical joke. What first strikes you when you enter a dissecting room? Formaldehyde. Damn it, it should smell of formaldehyde. And it does not. This is no practical joke. This is a serious crime. Your sister, Miss Cushing. Mary. At last. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. I thought it was Mary. I come to take some more of my things. I bought you a present before we argued. You may as well have it. I don't want it. I don't want it. What's the matter with you? Is it another disgusting prank? What? Well, he was your friend after all. Who was? I don't want your horrid parcel. Take it. Let's preserve the proprieties, at least, sister. You've flouted the rules of society all your life. And you had the effrontery to accuse me of interfering with Mary's marrying that man. Didn't you? What did you do? What did I do? I did nothing. You know what you did. You introduced Mary to other men, corrupting her. Mary has told me in her innocence. She accused me. Mary accuses no. I see your hand in her unhappiness. Nonsense. Why did Jim Browner start drinking again? He signed the pledge for Mary. That's what brought them together. She pinned the blue ribbon to his chest and he was a new man. So why did he break his pledge? Why ask me? Why did you quarrel with him? I never approved of Jim Browner, that's true. But he deserved better than being driven back to drink by your meddling. Sarah. Mary wasn't expecting you till much later. Well, I managed to catch the tail end of the float. Saved the whole time. Is she not here, then? No. Old Mrs. Cooper's not well again. Mary's with her. I said I'd help her with the laundry. She'll be back soon. You help her a lot, don't you? That's uh, nice. You know why I help her, I suppose? What? Why I'm always round here. Well, you're a sister. Can't you be happy for five minutes without her, Jim? <laughs> Here. Make yourself useful. <laughs> Drop the side, then. Will you drop this and bring it up the other side? What do you mean? Mary doesn't do that. There are plenty of things Mary doesn't do, I dare say. 
<laughs> Look, I'll show you how to do it, shall I? Now. Now, come on. You take this corner. Right. Now, you drop this. And you bring it up the other side. You do it yourself. That's not for me. I want no part of that. Pushing women's work at me. You keep that to yourself. and the other gentleman to see you, madam. As long as they don't bring those things near me. And where is he now? Mr. Browner was on the South American line when he and Mary married. But he was so fond of her that he found himself a berth in the North Sea boats, the London Den Helder line. And is Mary fond of him? It was a love match. Love? Although... Yes? I was loath to acknowledge it at the time. Why was that? I didn't think a sister of mine should be marrying a steward. But now... How do you feel now? I think Jim and Mary could be happy. You mean they weren't? Well, they were, at first. What happened? Perhaps you should ask Sarah. She practically lived there for a while. Uh, which ship is Mr. Browner serving with at present? The May morning. She sailed on the 17th for Belgium and Holland. Uh, they were in Rotterdam over Christmas. The crews draw lots and Jim was unlucky this year. Mary was to have spent Christmas with Sarah and me. And now Sarah, of course, is warden at the mission. Are you sad not to have her living with you still? Yes, I am. To tell you the truth, Mr. Holmes, things are not well between us. You've quarrelled? What about? It may have a bearing on what has happened to your sister, Mary. Well, I know that. Of course it does. Do you think I don't know that? I blame her for everything. Sarah? Of course. Sarah. She spent far more time than was necessary at Mary's lodgings. Jim and Mary were just married, making their own life, making their own friends. Then Sarah introduced Alec Fairbairn to them. I know it was not generously done. Sarah seemed to want to shame Jim Browner. I don't know what Jim had done to Sarah, but she seemed to hate him. I believe that you believe what? Ask her. Ask Sarah. She's here in the house collecting her things. Ask her if she did not mean Mary to go off with Alec Fairbairn. That is what she wanted. I know it. Ah! The message has been received then. Thank you. 
Allez, monsieur. Thank you for your help, Inspector. It's very difficult, Mr. Holmes. We can't ignore the evidence. What have we got? Two severed ears in a parcel. We've got the medical student, Jackete, who's been thrown out of the lady's house. Strong motive. Parcel, postmark Harridge on the 19th. He was in Harridge on the 19th. <laughs> That's as good as you get. Your logic seems foolproof, Hawkins. Thank you. So, well, oh, yes. Oh, I just regret that I haven't been able to keep it out of the newspapers. They're running the story in tomorrow morning's first edition. They've also managed to get hold of Miss Susan Cushing's name. She won't like that. Poor woman. This other matter, then, Mr. Holmes, you've clearly got some thoughts on that, haven't you? It is my belief that a member of Dr. Watson's profession, possibly of some distinction, has overstepped the mark. The corpses all belong to pugilists, amateur or otherwise. What is the unfortunate characteristic of boxers who have fought too long? Well, there can be such scarring of the brain that they behave as if they're drunk, slurred speech, loss of memory, and so on. They become punch drunk? Precisely. You mean somebody is studying the pathology of brain tissue? For all the best reasons, I dare say. And their passion for the subject has outrun their judgment. Sir Marcus Lanyon, I'll wager a month's salary on Sir Marcus. That's precisely his speciality. And he's impatient to fall, ruthlessly impatient. There you have it, Inspector. ever since you got back here this afternoon. Miss Cushing. Why did you quarrel with your brother-in-law, Mr. Browner? What? Who are you? What are you doing here? This is Sherlock Holmes. He is investigating the disappearance of your sister, Mary. She's gone off with Alec Fairbairn, that's all. Why? She had become frightened of her husband. Why? Jim Browner was a drunkard. He offered her violence. He, he was beneath contempt. What is your explanation for the severed ears, Miss Cushing? You saw that cardboard box. At your sister's house, those severed ears were meant for you, were they not? The message was for you. You understood what they meant. Marcel Jacquette sent them. He told me he might do something. I didn't realize he'd do anything so disgusting. She's lying, Watson. She's lying through her teeth. Excellent. I've been to the shipping line offices, too. And? It's as you thought. The May morning set sail from London for Den Helder on the 17th. But a hogshead got loose in her hold. She sprang a plate and had to put in for repairs. To Harwich? To Harwich. The crew were given leave on the 18th. The May morning left late on the 19th, the day the parcel was posted. Excellent, Watson. We have it! Mm. 
Mr. Holmes. Mr. Gull. They have telegraphed. Jim Browner came off the ferry at Ramsgate at seven o'clock this evening. Good. I knew I could rely on you. And I can rely on you, can I? Oh, you can. Does the name Sir Marcus Lanyon mean anything to you? It might. He will be warned off. And the orders from which you have been profiting will dry up. But so will the police interest in you. I'll be satisfied with that. We've acquired a bargain, Mr. Gull. Holmes? Oh, the knots on the parcel were a bowling and a sheet bed. Yes, sailors knots. You know that sailors deliberately do not sharpen their knives? No, in case of accidents. Hence the crude amputations. Harry's was the key. I'd rather it was there now. I suppose. Rana returned unexpectedly. Found his wife with Fairburn. He followed them. He murdered them both. He severed an ear from each and sent them, as he thought, to Sarah Cushing. Of course, he would go there immediately. He would be desperate for her to know that the severed ears were for her and not for her sister. Well, that being the case, the railway is operating as if it were a Sunday. Why? Because the Christmas holiday is still on. Do you realize Browner could have caught a much earlier train? No, I did not know. Mr. Holmes. A unique experience for you, Inspector. You may apprehend a murderer before you have even acknowledged there has been a murder. Look at me, Sarah Cushion. This is your handiwork. What have you done, Jim? What have I done? Nay, it's what you've done. I beg you, Jim. Look on me kindly. Whatever I did, I did for you. It was you. You poisoned her mind. I did it for you. They have arrested the lodger. I told them he did it. They suspect nothing of you, Jim. You can get away. Get away? You think I can get away? No! Put it all behind me, you no! do you? Are you mine? It is me! It's in here! Every last moment of it. 
comes out of the daylight at me. It goes on and on. I tell you, I dare not shut an eye and sleep since the daylight. I'm never without one or the other before me. May the blood rot in your veins, Sarah Cushing. No. No. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I believe you do. I'll tell you something. I'd rather have one kind word from her I've killed than on your love. I, I'd rather see her breathe in one minute more than a lifetime no, of what you could give don't me. Don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. <laughs> she loved me. That's the rule of the business. But she knew. She knew. She knew I, I thought more of my wife's footprint in the mud than I did of her body and soul. Where were they dreamt it? And uh, after he had rejected Sarah's advances? I never said a word to Mary, for I thought it would grieve her. Then I began to see a change in Mary herself. My wife had always been so understanding. Oh, she was suspicious of everything I did. We began to row. About nothing, nothing at all. And it maddened me. And this was Sarah's work. Yeah. Well, I didn't see it then, mind. I just saw it all go wrong. She and Mary were inseparable, and and then. Uh, well, then I broke my blue ribbon and began drinking again. So Mary had some reason to be disgusted with me now. And then this Fairburn fella chipped in. He was a dashing, swaggering sort of a chap. Smart and curled, educated too, I reckon. He could talk, he could. Blind I was. A little thing put me on one. I came into the parlour unexpected one day, and as I came in, I saw the light of welcome in my wife's eyes. But when she saw it was me, she turned away with a look of disappointment. There was no one but Alec Fairburn whose steps she could mistake for mine. I tell you, from that moment on, my peace was gone. Sarah was in the kitchen, and I went straight through and I told her that if Fairburn ever set foot in my place again, I'd send her his ears for a keepsake. I believe I could wish you had committed this deed of yours in France. They acknowledge the crime of passion there. You won't let them leave me alone, will you, sir? No. I won't. When I leave, I'll send an officer in. I don't like to be alone, see?
Your turn. Won't be a minute. She made it go wrong, didn't she? And you never thought of anyone but me. Did you, Jim? She loved you and she made me hate you. as if you had a secret, you see. She made me think the worst. The secret was her love would be. You should have got rid of her from our lives, Jim. I know. But I thought it would hurt you. Look at us now. I was stupid. Like this a big What is the meaning of it, Watson? What is the object of this circle of misery and violence and fear? It must have a purpose. For our universe has no meaning, and that is unthinkable. But what purpose? That is humanity's great problem which reason so far has no answer.